Good morning, Moray Rabotai, Beruchim Habaim. We are continuing on Masechet Bakot, and we are on Daf Yud Aleph, Amud Aleph, 18 lines from the top of the Amud, which is nine lines um, up from the beginning of the new Mishnah in the middle of the Amud. Today's Amud is being learned. Schud for the Neshama Vesterbat Naftali Tzvi Alevi by the um, Abraham family. And today's Amut has been sponsored, his learnings of this week uh, of the Kila has been sponsored by the Dayan family, the Cohen family, by Shei family, Hatzlacha um, for their families as well. And um, today's Amut has been also dedicated for Rafa Shalema of Iqbal ben Yair, the surgery that he has, Rafa Shalema Be'ezrat Hashem, and for Rachel Simcha Bat Nahid should have full recovery. Um, amen. We are um, at the tail end of the previous Gemara and basically finishing up one um, leftover item that we didn't get to finish yesterday. Sefer Torashe Tefaro Be Pishtan. If you have a Sefer Torah that you sewed up the different dapim, the different parchments with, instead of doing it with sinews, with gidim, you sewed up the Sefer Torah with linen, right? Is it kasher or is it not kasher? So it says, and the Gemara, one of them says kasher. One of them says pasur. Now, where do you see that? There's nowhere in the Chumash that says how you write a Sefer Torah. And certainly, you don't have a clear place that talks about how you attach the two dapim, the different parchments of the scroll of the Sefer Torah. Maybe I could just glue them together. Uh, what's the problem? So says the Gemara. The one that holds that that's invalidated. You cannot use linen threads to attach the parchments of the Sefer Torah. Because by Tfilin, it says, Now, Torah means that it has to be from kosher items, something that he, he, it is kosher to eat. Now, a parchment, that's kasher, right? It's, it's something that, that you, could, you could have. V'it kish kol Torah kula letfilin. And all of the Torah is compared with tefillin. So you learn the halachot of Sefer Torah from the halachot of tefillin. So if I know from that pasuk that by tefillin you cannot sew up the different parchments, because you know, by tefillin, um, you have, in tefillin shaliyad, you have parchments that are, um, you know, it's one piece of parchment, all the four parashiyot are written. In the tefillin shal rosh, you have four different parchments, so you don't have necessarily attachment of parchments together in that way, necessarily. But you have the entire tefillin sewed up from the, the bottom, the titorah, to the, to the ketizah, to the bayit. So all of that we know in, in, in the pasuk, And the Torah is compared with tefillin, so if you need to attach something in Torah, it has to also be with gidim with sinews, kosher sinews. You want to uh, attach the parchments together, it has to be kosher. You want to attach the atzechayim, the wood, sides from two ends to the parchment also has to be an attachment with uh, the sinews with the gidim as well. So it says the Gemara Ve'it kash kol ha-Torah kula le-tfilin Ma tfilin halacha no shem esinai le-tofran be-gidim that by, by tefillin, you have halacha Moshe Misinai, that you have to sew up the parchments of tefillin, or the 
parts of Tfilin together with Gidin. Of course, let Tofran be Gidin. From Torah Tashem Beficha, you learn that all of that is compared with Tfilin. Tfilin, we know already from Halacha Moshe Sinai that you have to have Gidin and all of the other parts you learn from Tfilin as well. The Idach, the other man, the Amar says, no. Ki itkash lemotar beficha. The, the comparison of Leman Tiet Torah Tashem Beficha, which is a par- parasha written by Tfilin, all that it tells you is that the comparison of Torah Tashem is only for the, the actual parchment that has to be a kosher animal. In other words, what does the Pasuk say? What do we know for sure? There's a par- parasha by parasha Tfilin. It says, Leman Tiet Torah Tashem Beficha. It's talking about um, the parasha of Tfilin. Now, Torah Tashem Beficha says Torah Tashem. That means all of the items of Torah has to be compared with the Tefillin. That's the Hekesh. It's talking about Tefillin, and it says Torah Tashem. It says Torah Tashem in parasha of Tefillin. So I have Tefillin compared with all of the items of Torah, Safrut, let's call it, right? Compared. Now, how, do you, how much do you have to compare? Do you have to compare every halakha of tefillin with every halakha of Sefer Torah? Or is it a very specific comparison? That's exactly the makhluket over here between Rabbi Yudar and Meir. Because we know the tefillin has many halakhot, right? For instance, the tefillin has to be kesidran. If you write tefillin in a way that um, you messed up, now you want to erase, you can't erase a, a thing of tefillin, you have to erase from there until the end, and then you have to go back and write it again. It has to be kesidran. By Sefer Torah, it doesn't have to be kesidran. That's why if you find a psul in the Sefer Torah, what do you do? You bring a sofer, he scratches it, he re- rewrites it, chazak baruch. In mezuzah, can you do that? You cannot do that in mezuzah. In mezuzah, if you find a psul, something that's written um, wrong, what do you have to do? You have to erase from there until the end of the mezuzah and rewrite, because if you just erase that word or letter and you write it up, that word is not chronologically written. It's written after the next word. Everything has to be written chronologically in mezuzah. So that, that, that's why you don't learn all the halachot of, that becomes the machloket over here. I know the halachot of tefillin, but do I, and I know that the tefillin is compared with Sefer Torah, does the entire thing have to be compared, or is it a very specific thing? So says the Gemara, one holds that you learn from this comparison uh, that just like tefillin has to be written um, has to be rather sewed up begidim with si- kosher sinews, the Sefer Torah also has to be sewed up and attached with kosher sinews. The other mandama says, no, it's a very specific comparison. When it says, it's just coming to tell you one halacha, one. And that is, just like the tefillin has to be written on a kosher parchment, you can't take the skin of a non-kosher animal and make parchments from it and write tefillin on. Just like that is correct by tefillin, it is also correct by Sefer Torah. And that's what we learn from tefillin to Sefer Torah. Nothing more than that. So says the Gemara, lemotar beficha, it's compared only for the fact that the parchment has to be from a kosher animal but for its halachot, for the rest of the laws and intricacies of tefillin, Sefer Torah is not compared with those. Amar Rav, Rav said, lehu debe habibi. I saw the tefillin of my uncle, my, my dear uncle. Of course, we know his uncle was Rabbi Chia, right? This is the second, third time it comes in the, in the Masech, comes up in the Masech. That they were sewed up with um, threads of linen. Now, of course, um, 
it, it should say Sifre, if you take a look at Agaot, the Siyunim, the Ritzba already says it over here, that it can't be Tefillin, in the Gemara, the Nusach is a mistake, uh, it's, it's a typo over here, it has to be, I saw the Sefer Torah of Rabbi Chia, because is there anybody that disagrees by Tefillin that needs to be sewed up by um, kosher sinews? No. That's Halakha Moshe Misinai. Nobody disagrees with that. Nobody. So you can never say, that, oh, I saw the Tefillin of Rabbi Chia, it was, it was sewed up with uh, threads of, of linen. That's for sure not the case. So it was, I saw the Sefer Torah of, or the, the Sefer Sifrei Torah of my uncle Rabbi Chia that were all sewed up and attached with Pishtan, and says the Gemara, Rav himself, commenting on his uncle, it says, Velet Hilcheta Kevate. Then the halacha is not like him, or the Gemara is saying it, halacha is not like uh, Rav in this specific, in Rav Ramchia rather, in this specific case. Now, next Mishnah. Says the Mishnah, Echad Mashrach Beshem El Amishcha, Veechad Hamerube Begadim, Veechad Shavar, Mimishichuto, Machzirin Et HaRotzeach. Now, we spoke about the fact that the Rotzeach who murdered somebody accidentally has to stay in Are Miklat until the death of Kohen Gadol. Now, how many Kohen Gadols can you have? Is it only the Kohen Gadol? For instance, we, ha- we learned the Mishnah in the beginning of Masechet Yuma, uh, that they would sign another Kohen in, in, in his stead, that if a psul happens for Kohen Gadol, you always have a vice president, uh, Lavdil, right? That if the president dies, you right, right, away have some, right, right away have somebody taking over. So for Kohen Gadol also they had Kohen Acher, the Mishnah says they would, they would appoint Tachtav uh, in, in his stead, that if a psul happens to him, the other one would step up the plate. Now imagine a psul happened. All of a sudden the Kohen Gadol was rendered invalid to serve his Avodah. What would happen? The other coin would step up. Then what would happen tomorrow or, or seven days later when the Kohen Gadol, the actual Kohen Gadol, would go back to his state of being Tahor? Nothing. He would take over again. He's the Kohen Gadol. This other guy is, uh, you know, it's temporary. But this guy was a Kohen Gadol for one day. Right? So is that a Kohen Gadol? Is that Naka? Then you have another Kohen that was very special, another ordinary Kohen. Was the Kohen Mashuach Milchama. He was the, the Kohen Gadol of warfare, right? He was the one that dealt with all the issues of warfare. One of the jobs of Kohen Gadol was in the leadership of the community. But this aspect of it, you needed a powerful speaker, someone that would go right before the battle and really fire up the people. That's, that's a Kohen Mashrach. Is that considered a Kohen Gadol? You have, to, you have to ask yourself, right? And also within the Kohen Gadol um, proper, within the actual Kohen Gadol, you have two types of Kohen Gadol. Until the times of Yoshiyahu HaMelech, we actually had a proper way of appointment for Kohen Gadol, which would be with Shemen HaMishcha. Shemen HaMishcha that Moshe Rabbeinu himself made, it was a process of anointing the king, anointing the Kohen Gadol, and a new Kohen Gadol would be nominated and anointed and started with Shemen HaMishcha. Yoshiyahu, seeing the end near of the destruction of the Bet HaMikdash, one of the things that he did was he hid away the Shemen HaMishcha. So up until the time of Yoshiyahu, every Kohen Gadol was nominated officially and anointed with the Shemen HaMishcha. After the time of Yoshiahu, how do you appoint a Kohen Gadol? Nothing. You don't have an appointment like that. You just appoint them and they would wear the uh, eight garments of Kohen Gadol, like that differentiates between Kohen Gadol and Kohen Hediot. Kohen Hediot had four Begadim, four garments, and Kohen Gadol had eight. Simply understanding the four that Kohen Hediot had was the same as the four basic garments. Maybe the belt was different. 
And then he had it's the tzitz, he had the, the um, head plate, of course, he had the choshen, he had the me'il, right? He had the avne, he, he had the, um, the, the uh, tunic of the, the kohen gadol. He had four additional garments. So he would wear that, we'll call them a merubebe begadim. The kohen gadol that was not anointed with the shemen ha but he was just distinguished by having more clothing, and that would be his appointment as the Kohen Gadol, because he didn't have Shevet HaMishcha of Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay? So says the Mishnah, all three of the ones that we just mentioned, slash four, if they, one of them would die, the guy would go off from Galut. Who are they? Echad Mashuach B'Shemen HaMishcha. If you have a Kohen Gadol prior to the time of Yoshiahu that was properly anointed the Shemen HaMishcha, if he dies, of course, that's the, the, the main case of a Kohen Gadol dying. This guy, or all the guys that went to Galut, would go back home, right? Ve'echad she'avar mimeshichuto. And, sorry, ve'echad ha'merubebe begadim. And same would be for after, post the time of Yoshiahu, that you don't have Shemen HaMishcha, and um, the, the person would just be distinguished by, and appointed also by having more uh, begadim, the, you know, the eight garments of Kohen Gadol, post the time of Yushiyahu, v'chad shavar memishichuto. And also the Kohen Gadol that was appointed for a day or a week, and then he was put away from his keuna gedola, is the guy, the reserve Kohen, right? There's a reserve Kohen, and imagine you have a reserve Kohen, and the Kohen Gadol itself, the Kohen Gadol himself, he's like 30 years old. He's young and strong, and the reserve is 90 years old, right? So if the, if the Kohen Gadol would become Tameh, and they would have to appoint the older guy, and after one day or one week, the Kohen Gadol would go back, now everyone is very lucky. Because either of the two that dies, everyone goes home, right? So now that you have a nine-year-old, uh, you know, in the waiting room, kind of it's like so, everyone is happy because that, even though that he was Kohen Gadol only for one day, when once you become Kohen Gadol, you never go down from from that level of being called the Kohen Gadol, even though that you're not the um, Kohen Gadol proper, so to speak. You're not the main Kohen Gadol. Any of these people's deaths are going to be cause for the Rotzeach to go back home from Ale Miklad. Rabbi Yehuda adds Af Mashuach Milchama. He adds even the Kohen Mashuach Milchama, which is the next in command, basically. He's another aspect of leadership of Kehuna. He's different than the other Kohanim in many aspects. And Rabbi Yehuda says this shall be another aspect of his, um, his difference. He's another fantastic idea behind the, the, in the puzzle piece of Romer Simcha, the, the Meshachachma, how this is a, a system of rehabilitation. You, you had these people who probably came from broken homes, probably came from, from difficult backgrounds, and now you have a motherly figure caring for them, coming there, loving them, davening for them, helping them, bringing them food and clothing and all that. Now, this mother, of course, had um, very serious... Um, selfish reasons for it because she doesn't want her son to die but at the same time are you faking it or not you have to take care of these people because lest they would daven imagine this guy is going there is away from his, his, his whole society and every morning he gets up and says and then he says please kill this Kohen Gadol let me go back home right so you have all these people davening for Kohen Gadol to die if somebody that has to uh, offset this to make sure that you know, they, 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 they like the, the mother of the Kohen Gadol taking care of them, being there for them as a support system. That's what the mothers of the Kohanim Gedolim would do. That they should not daven that their son, the Kohen Gadol, should die, which is a tremendous, tremendous um, Gemara, Mishnah, as we'll see just in a moment, the power of tefillah that is hidden in this, it's very much um, aligned with the parasha that we just had, parasha Korach, that Moshe Rabbeinu has to, to dive into Hashem, not to accept the tefillah of Korach Va'adato. 
right? Moshe literally has to beg Hashem, Hashem, please don't turn into their mincha, don't listen to their tefillah. Rav Chaim Shalom says, says, can you imagine for a moment what would have happened if Hashem would listen to Korach's tefillah? Korach was challenging the very aspect of the truth of the Torah, right? The Yerushalmi says in Pea that, that Korach was kofer be'ikar. He said, Torah is not mina shamayim. Moshe Rabbeinu made these things up. He made himself king. He made his brother. It's the whole nepotism is not from Hashem. He's challenging Hashem's nevuah and the entire Yiddishkeit. Hashem would never listen to him. Why does Moshe Rabbeinu have to beg Hashem not to... Says Rav Chaim Shosh, because a tefillah that comes from the bottom of a person's heart, you never know what that tefillah is capable of doing. You never take a tefillah lightly. And why Yuma says, the Kohen Gadol, we're going to have that in just a moment. The Kohen Gadol, in the, in the few moments that he had in, um, in Kodesh HaKodashim, or you know, the, in, in the Kodesh, right? He would utter a very short tefillah, and part of his tefillah was, for all the needs of Kulal Yisrael, Kogel would say, Hashem, please don't listen to the tefillah of Red Rachim B'Shat Leinyan Geshem Bilvat. Please don't listen to the tefillah of the people who are uh, passing through the roads in the time that the world needs rain. Why? Because the whole world needs rain. As the Sarab Chaim Shavuot says, this says, the whole world is davening for ten talum matar, ten, you know, you know, Hashem, Aruach, Morida Geshem, Hashem, please rain. You know, our Parnassah depends on this. If it doesn't rain, we, we are completely ruined, right? Back in the day, they didn't have like reservoirs. It rained, that's all it was. And then you have five people who are going on the way, and they say, Hashem, please, no rain. If it rains, I'm stuck, right? So which one does Hashem listen to? Millions of people or a handful of people? So the Hashem Shalom is, if those handful of people are davening from their kishkas, from their guts. It's a tefillah that's coming from the ma'amake alev. It could overthrow the millions of tefillot of Klal Yisrael. Imagine the power, power of tefillah. And this is basically this Rishta over here. Let's start the Gemara. Says the Gemara. Menachemili, how do we know that this three Kohanim slash four, any of their deaths is considered reason for the Rotzeach to go back home from Aremi. Klat Amar, Rav Kana, Damar Kra. Says Rav Kana, this is a drasha from, from the Pasuk, because the Pasuk, speaking about this concept of the Rotzeach going back home, mentions Kohen Gadol three different times, three in three different Pasukim. One, it says, the Yashavba, the Rotzeach, would sit in it, would dwell in it, would live in the Aremi Klat, until the death of the Kohen Gadol. That's one. Uchtiv, second one. Ki be'ir miklato yeshev, admot ha-Kohen Gadol. He repeats it again. It's repetitive, it's superfluous. Why do you have to, do you have um, a pasuk that is repeated again? I don't need it for Allah. He just told me. It's coming to tell you there's a different Kohen Gadol that you would, you would go home for, right? Whether the Kohen Gadol is a Kohen Gadol that was nominated with Shemana Mishcha or Merubah Begadim. And a third one tells you yet another Kohen, Uchtiv, a third Pasuk, Vacharem Mota Kohen Gadol, that after the death of the Kohen Gadol, he goes back home. Ach, Shkoyach. Of course I know that. It's redundant. Why do you have to say it again? Says the, the, the Gemara that's coming to tell you there's a third Kohen that you go home for. Who is that? A Kohen Sha'avar mi the one that served only one day, right? The, 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 uh, the reserve. But Rabbi Yehuda Ketiv, and Rabbi Yehuda who says, even Mashuach bin Hamai found the fourth Pasuk. Says Rabbi Yehuda, Kra Harina, la shuv la shevet ba'ares ad mota Kohen. He says, you go back to live in your own land, you go to this, to this land of Aremiklat until the death of Kohen. Another Pasuk. So this must be bringing a fourth. And says the, the Gemara Chachamim who disagree with Rabbi Yehuda, they say, Over here is the only time that doesn't say Kohen HaGadol. It just says, Admot HaKohen. Right? So says Chachamim, that must be referring to one of the previous three. It's not a new one. It's not a fourth one. So that's Machloket Rabbi Yehuda and Chachamim. So says the Gemara, 
לפיכך אמותיהם של הכהנים, the reason that the, the mothers of the כהנים would bring food and, and clothing, תמא דלא מצלו, says the Gemara, a, a, a super powerful question, super powerful question. says the reason that the כהן would not die is because the mothers would provide these items and take care of these, these רוצחים, these murderers, that they shouldn't dive in, and it's, it's mashma, you're telling me, you're indicating clearly that had they not been taking care of them and these people would dive in for the Kohen Gadol to die, actually he would die because of the tefillah verotzeach? When he didn't do anything wrong? That means if somebody hates somebody for no reason and he's die, every morning he's davening that this guy should die, he's going to die? We have a principle, says the Gemara, a tefillah shav, a tefillah in vain, when you have no reason, when you have no, when you have, when you have no reason to daven for something, that thing is not going to happen. The Gemara is going to bring a pasuk, katsipor lanud, kaderor lauf ken kelelat chinam lo tavo. The kelelat chinam, when you curse someone for no reason, when you daven for negativity of someone for no reason, Null and void. It's not going to come. So what's, wh why does the mother have to go around do it, which is going to be opening doors to a fantastic, fantastic Gemara, which will continue in the days to come. <laughs>